So we're talking about oxidation numbers. And the reason why is there's a type of reaction where pretty much there's this exchange of electrons between reactants. And these react, this type of reaction they call like electrochemistry, but it's really powerful stuff. I mean, these types of reactions, if you can understand them, you can start understanding what's going on inside cells. And combustion is really complicated. Metabolism, there's rust, all, a lot of these things all involve electrochemistry. They all involve the transfer of electrons and, and getting to where they're going. So here's a kind of a lame movie, but that's all I really have. So they're, all they're doing is they're just showing that copper reacts with oxygen in the air. So you can reverse the reaction by just heating it up a lot and getting that nice shiny co copper back again. So, and that's an electrochemical reaction. There's an exchange of electrons. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that, right, the copper and the oxygen, they're the reactants. The copper is giving up its electrons to the oxygen, right? And it makes copper oxide. So one reactant's giving up electrons, the other one is accepting them. And that's the basis, foundation for what we're really doing. OK, the rules. I've added, this has been, mod I modified this a little bit this morning. So you'll see some things that aren't in your notes, but it's not, not too different. So in order to, the big goal, really, of, of what we're going to do is these, uh, these reactions, before we just kind of randomly try to balance reactions, now we're going to have a set of rules to balance them. We're not going to do that today, though. We're going to do that next class period. But these reactions are really complicated. Without, doing, without following their steps, it's going to take you forever to try to figure out how to balance these reactions. So what we're going to learn about today is the foundations that we can build on to balance these electrochemistry reactions. And it starts with keeping track of those darn electrons. And we keep track of them by assigning oxidation numbers to every single element and every compound that's in the reaction. Okay, so what are these rules to assign oxidation numbers? So the first one, the oxidation number <coughs> of an atom in an element is zero. So for example, you've got in the reaction, you've got iron solid plus all this other stuff, right? And it forms something or other, right? The point is, is how do you assign iron solid uh, oxidation number? Well, the rule, this top rule here, rule number one, says that it's zero because that's, that's its element, right? It's sitting there all by itself. And same with nitrogen. It's just an element, an, ele an element all by itself sitting there, zero. So even though there's two nitrogens, they say, yeah, no, that's the element nitrogen. It's all by itself. It's zero. And then they say, OK, well, what if you have these elements, but they're not, you know, they're the iron. Like instead of having iron solid, you have iron plus three. Well, now they, they want the oxidation state to be the charge. That's the rule. So for iron plus 3, it would be what, Baudi? It would be plus the charge on the iron would be 3. So that would be the oxidation number. Iron plus, that would be plus 3. I, I'm just going to circle my oxidation numbers. Otherwise, it's, you have charges and you have all this other stuff around here. We have a chloride anion, Lorena. What would probably be its oxidation state? Negative 1. It's just the charge. So it's not too bad so far, right? So if you have an element, no charge, it's 0. Rule 2, ions, just make it the charge. Oxygen. So they have a rule all on their own, rule number 3, for oxygen. They say it's negative 2 in pretty much everything. Negative 2 in all, pretty much everything. And you can read the details, the rest of this, talking about peroxides, but man, maybe one out of 100 problems you'll see it. So I'm not even going to cover the, the exceptions. If you see oxygen, you just always call it negative 2. Okay? And 
that's all you're pretty much going to see in the homework. So here's this funky compound, diphosphorus pentaoxide. The, Sydney, the oxygen's oxidation state would be what in that compound? Uh, negative 2, right? So wherever you see it, ah, negative 2, oxygen's negative 2. Sodium oxide, Emily, negative 2. Oxygen. We should have a little G on it for oxygen gas, Kenneth. What would oxygen be here? Uh, I said, I threw it in there as a trick question. Because you have to go back and, right, it's, an, it's all by itself, it's zero, right? See the trick question there, right? Zero, because it's an element all by itself. So it's not always negative, too. You've got to be careful. Hydrogen. In that rule there, Enrique, they're saying hydrogen is almost always what? One. Positive one. It's almost always positive one. So in HCl, Stephanie, what would be hydrogen's oxidation state? One. one. Positive one. How about an H2 hydrogen gas, Rebecca? H2, what would it? Zero. Yeah. It's an element all by itself. OK. Halogens. The only, the only one they're really worried about is fluorine. And they're saying, man, always make it negative 1 in all of its compounds. So we have a compound here, Stephen, calcium fluoride. Fluorine must be negative 1. How about fluorine gas, Giselle, F2? Zero element all by itself. Very good. Okay. Here, rule six, I think, is the biggest one. The rest aren't really all that, I mean, they're helpful. But rule six is where it really all comes together. What you do is you add up all the oxidation states. So I have, like in this compound, 2P diphosphorus pentaoxide, I have two phosphoruses and five oxygens. I have to add up all those oxidation states, and I have to get the charge on this whole thing. And so we need to get used to looking at compounds and seeing what the charge is, because all the oxidation states have to add up to be that charge. So Dylan, in this diphosphorus pentaoxide, what's the charge on this compound? If it, if it was negative 2, you'd have to write, right? So they're talking about over the whole compound. What, when they don't write anything, what's the charge? If they don't write anything, the overall charge is zero. It's neutral. So all right, look at all, all these compounds, CEF2, F2, P2O5, HCl, hydrogen. They're all zero. That's their overall charge, because they didn't write anything up there. right? So that's the overall charge is zero. So when you add up two phosphoruses, five oxygens, you better get zero. OK. Phosphate. Phosphate's charge, well, let's just do the P2O5 first, Megan. Megan, what was oxygen's? What was oxygen's? Uh, oxygen's always negative 2, right? So negative 2. So oxygen's negative 2. But I have how many of them? Uh, I have five of them, Audrey. So what's the total math here? Negative 5. Each oxygen is negative 2. 5 times negative 2 would make it, right? Because each oxygen has a negative 2. And I've got 5 of them. I'm just trying to add up all the charges. So 5 times negative 2 would be negative, negative 10. So I've got negative 10 to worry about here. So I'm. The reason why I like to circle my answers is because there gets to be all these numbers up here. O is negative 2. We have to find out what P is. I've got how many of them again, Lauren? How many P's do I have? I've got two of them. But I have to add up those two P's, Tanya, add them to the negative 10, and I better get 0. That means, that means each P has to be what? Each P is 0. I'd have 2 times 0 is 0, plus a negative 10. 
this whole thing would be negative 10. That ain't going to work. So it'd have to be, if each p is 10, right? 2 times positive 10 is positive 20. And a negative 10, I got positive 10. The whole charge would have to be positive 10. Five, right? So it might help to write some little intermediate steps, right? OK, I've got two p's. They have to add up to be a positive 10. Well, so you put the little positive 5 in there and circle it. Uh, that's my system, right? So I circle my oxidation state. So 2 times positive 5 is positive 10. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Add them up, I get the overall charge, which is 0. OK. So try the, try the same game with phosphate. Try the same game with phosphate. Ident see if you can identify what the oxidation state of oxygen is and what the oxidation state of phosphorus is in that iron phosphate. Your overall charge here is not zero anymore. It has to add up to be a negative three. Get it, Connor? Plus 5 and negative 2, he says. I'm going to write down his answers and see if they work. Plus 5 and negative 2. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So what plus a negative 8 would give me negative 3? Yeah, he's right, 5. So 5. It works. OK. So what? We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to go to the boards, and then I'm going to kick you off the boards, and then we're going to come back and do some stuff. So let's go to the boards and work these out, and then we'll come back. So we just want to determine the oxidation number for each element in each of those compounds. Where has nitrogen? Would I use the same charge that I have for this nitrogen? No. Oh, wait. No. 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 You got to. See if you can work on it together with the folks around you. You'll figure it out. So determine the oxidation number for each element in each compound. Okay. So work, work with the folks around you. If they don't get it, just ask. I'll be glad to help you. So first you have SO2. Great. Oxygen has to be a negative 2. So circle it. So S has to be a what? Well, if, if you have, you can write up here a negative 4 because you have two oxygens, oh, okay. right? So whatever S has to be, it has to add up to be this to get 0. Right. So it's positive 4. Positive 4. Right. OK, you figuring this out? So let's just make sure everyone's on the right track here. O, negative 2, circle yeah. it. That's your answer. I've got two oxygens, so I really have a negative 4. Sulfur needs to be a plus 4. Right? So you're on the right track if you're giving sulfur a positive 4, oxygen a negative 2. Okay, and just, so just ask. We can skip phosphate. We already did phosphate together, right? Did you get them all? Uh huh. You said this would be negative because. Yeah, O is always negative 2. So this would be negative 4. Yeah, but circle that negative 2 because that means that's your answer. That's how. Otherwise, you have to write O equals negative 2. Somewhere, somewhere you need to identify your answers. So I'm identifying my answers by circling them. If you don't want to do that, you have to write O equals S equals. Right? Both of, both of those ways to identify the oxidation states. Just circling them seems faster and easier to me. I don't know.
was saying, like, I don't know if we're supposed to, like, try and get this to one, or if we're just, like, keeping it the way it is. Since nitrate is negative one, that just makes this nitrogen positive now. Now, on if you're working on something like D, don't forget that all that stuff we memorized, right? Like, you might even recognize these. Sometimes it helps. You might recognize this as ammonium, right? And chloride, Cl minus, right? Because that's, that's what it is. So if, if you recognize that, that's a, sometimes there's some shortcuts. Then chlorine has to be a negative 1, because that's chloride, Cl minus 1. Right? But you don't have to do it that way, but chlorine has to be negative 1. You've got each hydrogen is a positive 1. But sometimes that gives you enough info to figure out the rest. Right? Because that. It has to be ammonium chloride. So you could almost make it two problems and find NH4 plus and solve it. But keeping it all together seems easier for people. for N? Because CL has to be a negative 1. They only have one of them. But here you have a plus 4 times positive was positive 4. Right? So what plus a positive 4 and a negative 1 gives you 0? It has to be a negative 3 because negative 3 and negative 1 would be negative 4. That would cancel it out. So on, on E, did you see the easy compound? I mean, the easy element? Iron has to be what? Two, because look at the little subscript down there. So that's where I start on these. I kind of, after doing a bunch of them, I figured out those, those shortcuts and those tricks. Iron has to be a plus two. And then the rest will, go, will get a lot easier. And you can either find it as one big answer here, or just use nitrate to get your answer. Either way it would work. Okay. If you use this compound, you have to realize you have two nitrates in there. Yeah. It works, though. You can still do it. Or just use NO3- minus to get the N and the O. Either way it would work. So what is N there? Plus 5. Mm-hmm. On F, where it's CLO4, if O is still a negative 2, that's like, and then it's times 4, that's a negative 8. Well, start at the beginning, make, make sure we're on the right track. Calcium, you said, was 2, just from the formula. Okay. And then... And then you can either do the whole math from this great big thing and do the math, right? Plus 2, negative 2, four, 2 times 4 is 8, times 8 is negative 16, right? You can do it that way, or you can do it a little bit easier way and just recognize ClO4 minus and do it that, and solve it from this. Either way would work. So if we do it the easy way, this would be a negative. This would be a negative two. Four times negative two is negative eight. Chlorine would have to be a positive seven, because okay. seven and negative eight would give you negative one. But either way you do it, then it would have to work out that way. Do go back to which one? Okay. Okay, for E, yeah. so if I was going to do E, this is a negative 2. 
I've got actually six oxygens. So six times a negative two is a negative 12. Okay? And this iron is a plus two. So I only have one of them. So this has to be two n's. So really two x here or something, right? So I need, I need two n's. So a positive two and a negative 12, and then two times x has to add up to be zero. So if x is five, five times two is 10, plus two is 12, and a negative 12 will give me zero. So it's a, little, it's a little more work, I think, to keep it together, but, but it works. It always works that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. It's five, positive five. All right, because look, two times, three times, you actually have six oxygens. Six times negative two is negative 12. We've got two n's. That's my two n's here. And then, an iron has to be plus 2. So a positive 2 and a negative 12 is a negative 10. X has to be a positive 5. So if it might look better if I write two n's here. Okay. All right, so let's, we'll come back. We'll do some more of these at the end of the hour. Let's, let's uh, wrap up our terminology here. There's some useful electrochemistry terminology that the homework is going to expect you to know. When a reactant gets oxidized, its oxidation state changes as it's getting converted to product. This gets more, does anybody know? Oxidized means gets more positive. Positive. I think someone might have said it. Oxidized means gets more positive. So for example, circle the reactant that gets oxidized. Well, both of these oxidation states are what? And chlorine is zero. They're both zero. So you have to go over to the other side and see what's going on. Iron is going to be a plus two. That means each chlorine has to be a negative one. So which reactant got oxidized? Which reactant got an oxidation state that became more positive? Iron. So there's your answer. Iron. You see that? Because iron went from zero to plus two. You see that, Giselle? Okay. So when a reactant gets reduced, its oxidation state changes as it's getting converted to product, and it becomes more what, Kendall? Uh, negative. More negative. Kendall, not Kenneth. There's negative. Okay. So again, you play the same game. Which reactant got reduced? He's zero. That's zero. This one was plus two. This one was negative one. So which reactant would you say, Sarah, got reduced? Its oxidation state became more negative. All right. Iron goes from zero to positive two. Chlorine goes from zero to negative one. It's a chlorine, definitely, right? Because it got more negative. Okay. So, ox so oxidized means the oxidation state got more positive. Reduced means the oxidation state got more negative. You just have to remember that, I guess. Oxidizing and reducing agents are always bouty. How would you fill in that blank? Yeah, they're always reactants. Exactly. Okay. Oh, we're not ready for this example yet. <laughs> uh, we pretty much, to answer this question, let's, we'll come back to it. Oxidizing and reducing agents are always reactants. Okay. Because this is the type of question you're going to see. You know, circle the reducing agent. Well, let's... We need some hints here first. You can always say oxidizing agents get reduced. Reducing agents always get oxidized. So just know that. It's kind of odd. Reducing agents always get oxidized. Oxidizing agents always get reduced. So knowing that, up here, how would you circle the reducing agent? Again, this goes from 0 
positive 2, 0 to negative 1. Lorena, what would be the reducing agent? It'd be the guy, I think you said it, it's going to be the reducing agents get oxidized, so it's got to be the reactant that got oxidized, and she said the iron, right? So, exactly. So just remember, reducing agents get oxidized. Oxidizing agents get reduced. And they're always reactants. They're always reactants. OK. So here we go. Now we're up to the boards the rest of the hour. So we'll do these. And then we'll go back and do some more of that we were working on before. So let's, let's go to the boards and do these. Label the oxidizing and reducing agents. Yep. You have to see me after class. Okay. You have to see me after class. Let's label the oxidizing and reducing agents. For each reaction. You guys don't want to get up? You're getting lazy? It's hard to get you up twice in one class period. plus nitrate forms tin oxide and nitrous oxide. See if you can identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. This, don't forget, this whole thing's a negative one. That's what we were thinking. Yeah, that whole nitrate's a negative one. It's kind of low. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that negative one is hard to see here for the nitrate, but it's a negative one, right, as a charge. So hopefully you wrote down 10 is 0. Each oxygen's a negative 2. That's a negative 6. So nitrogen has to be what? In nitrate, positive five. In fact, do you, do you realize we really, we really don't need to do nitrate? All we need to do is figure out what tin is doing. Because then, because one of these has to be the reducing agent, one has to be the oxidizing agent. So really just got to figure out the, one of them. Might have been easier just to work with tin and not even worry about nitrate. So tin is zero. What is tin on the other side? I hear plus 4, right? Because each ox is a negative 2. That'd be a negative 4. So 10 has to be. So 10, 10 goes from 0 to positive 4. So 10 is the 10 gets oxidized. So it is the reducing agent. So that means nitrate must be the oxidizing agent. You don't even need to calculate anything. Okay. So really, just work on one of them. Don't you don't need to work on both. 
Try B. Identify the oxidizing and reducing agent. from plus 4 to plus 6. That's why you wrote reducing agent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So that means this has to be the oxidizing, oxidizing agent. agent. How'd you get plus 4 for this? You see it? So in B, did, which one is the reducing agent in B? You want to figure it out? Is it the sulfite or the chromate? Sulfite? Sulfite? The reducing agent. I think Dylan's right. All right. Because 3 times negative 2 negative 6. This has to be a positive 4. Then on the other side, you got negative 8. It goes to positive 6. Yeah. So it got oxidized. That makes it the reducing agent. So chromate must be the oxidizing agent. So one more, then we'll go on, we'll work back, we'll finish the other examples. Now, there, when you're doing these, there is an easier one to do than the other one. Like in this one, I would mess with the chromium. Why? Look at that product. You know it's three on this side. So I'd be messing with this dichromate here. Because you know it's, it's the easy way to go. You know chromium is three over here. It'd be a lot easier. That's why you should be working at the board. <laughs> so I could, so I could give you a hint. Well, you don't need it in your notes. You're trying to develop a skill here, and explaining it to other people. You won't forget if you explain it to somebody. Oh yeah, you, there's, but realize, realize H isn't going to change on you, O isn't going to change on you. You're really interested in the arsenic. You're really interested in that, what that arsenic is doing. Because the H and the O, they're not going to change on you. What did you get for your, Lauren, what did you get for your chromium here? What number did you get assigned it? Six? Yeah, that would work, right? Because two times positive six is positive 12 and a negative 14. I give you a negative two. I agree with that. So it goes from six to three. That got reduced, so it's the oxidizing agent. 
So this must be the reducing agent. Huh. No, that's, that's random. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, chromium goes from positive 6 to positive 3. So chromium got reduced. So if chromium got, this compound got reduced, so it's the oxidizing agent. So this has to be the reducing agent. You don't even have to figure it out. Yes. But technically, it's arsenic. Arsenic is what's doing all the the work because H and O they don't even change oxidation states. Arsenic is the magic. It's where the magic happens. So you have a few minutes left. See if you can figure out these guys' oxidation states. Whoa, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would start with the yeah, the ones that the rules are fixed. Oxygen, hydrogen, yeah, Kenna? Um, and uh, what's called sulfur? How do, you, how do you find that? Well, lithium, remember, lithium is always plus what? So this would be a good example where it's kind of easier to break it up into its ions. You're going to have two Li pluses and this thiol sulfate, S2O3 with a negative 2. Or you can do it all in one big thing, but you have to realize lithium's plus 1, because the periodic table says that's the only ion lithium forms. Yeah, you've got eight O's, so that'd be a negative 16 total. Now the CL, you have two of them. You have to realize first that calcium is a plus two. So there's two ways to realize it. One is that's a two down there. The other way is calcium is always plus two because it's in that group two. So anyway, you've got a plus two and a negative 16 is a positive, sorry, it's a negative 14, right? So these two chlorines and a negative 14 have to add up to be zero. It has to be positive seven. Would it matter if this was one and this was two? Lithium has to be positive one. The total is going to be positive two on it because there's two lithiums. But each lithium is positive one. Yeah. Yeah, total. But you should circle plus one, though. If you circle plus two, you're saying that K is. Yeah. Yeah, so you. Because what we're. It might be clearer, Sydney, if we just wrote K equals positive one, C equals, and O equals. Right? Because then it's the circling thing might get kind of negative two. Okay, now we've got. No, potassium is plus one. All right? K is always plus one. Remember group one? All those guys have plus one. So circle that plus one. All right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go.